Hey everyone, this is Christine Vallis and I wanted to connect with you guys to let you know about an upcoming feast happening this week on God's calendar. It is the Feast of Passover. And this is a pretty popular feast. I'm sure many of you guys out there have heard about it. Um, some of you might be thinking, well, what does Passover have to do with me, you know? But I encourage you guys not to pass over Passover because if you are seeking God, if you are seeking Messiah, if you are seeking Yeshua Jesus, He can be seen right here in this awesome feast of Passover. In fact, coming up, I'm attaching a teaching that I did a couple years ago called Seeing Yeshua Jesus in the Passover Seder. Now, the Passover Seder is a dinner um, that tells the story of the Exodus and basically shows, you know, all of the types and shadows, really, of the Messiah. And, you know, actually, the Last Supper was a Passover Seder, and I believe that's why Jesus told his disciples, I have been earnestly desiring to have this Passover with you because I believe he just wanted to let them know that the types and shadows were over and that he is God's Passover lamb that is here to take away the sin of the world. And so that is so exciting. And so I pray that the eyes of your heart are enlightened as you watch this teaching and that you may see the beautiful redemption of our awesome God through Jesus Yeshua, all because of his great love for us. And so I pray that as you watch the teaching, you are encouraged to celebrate Passover and celebrate our redemption through the Passover lamb, Yeshua Jesus. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and be blessed. Hey guys, it's Christine Vallis, and I have been earnestly desiring to share this teaching with you on Passover. Just as Jesus said, I have been earnestly desiring to partake of the Passover meal, I feel the same way. I am so excited to share with you guys about Passover and um, how we shouldn't pass over Passover. Because a lot of us, I think, as Christians think that Passover is what the Jewish people do during this time of year. And us Christians, we celebrate Easter and they have nothing to do with them, with each other. But nothing could be further from the truth. So truly, let us not pass over Passover because it truly is all about Jesus, the Passover lamb. And this day of Passover is truly the day when Jesus died on the cross. And a lot of times, you know, we look at Good Friday and sometimes it's really far away from Passover, but really, you know, Good Friday can land anywhere on, on the calendar, but it's when Passover happens, that's really when Jesus died on the cross. So we want to enter into that, and I want to just teach um, just a, really some understanding about um, Passover and even that Last Supper that all of us um, have read so, so many times, probably know the story, have seen the picture, but if you're like me, I had no idea that that Last Supper was anything really other than a last dinner. I had no idea it was a Passover Seder. So, wow, I was like, really? And so I was like, well, what do they do at a Passover Seder? And it makes you really curious. And so one of the elements of a Passover Seder is the Passover plates. It's it tells the story of the Passover, of the Exodus, of, of our redemption. So I want to go through the plate here and uh, just show you how it all points to Jesus. And so first I want to tell you that Seder, that word Seder means order. So there is an order of telling the story. And even in Exodus 13, um, God says, remember this day and celebrate it by eating certain foods, right? Which we'll, which we'll go through. And, um, you know, it all goes back to that first Passover. So if you don't know of the first Passover story, read about it in Exodus 12. It's when the Lord instructed the Israelites to take in an unblemished lamb into their homes and care for it, make sure it had no blemish. And then four days later, take the blood of that unblemished lamb and put it over their doorpost. And when death the angel of death would come through. God would see the blood of that unblemished lamb 
and death would literally pass over them. And that's where you get pass over from, right? So now we see that is totally a picture of Jesus. That's a foreshadowing, foreshadowing of the Passover lamb when Jesus died on the cross, that his blood on the cross not only covered our sins, but erased them past, present, and future. So we want to receive Jesus, receive his blood over the doorposts of our hearts. And that's what he calls us to do, receive him, especially here in this season. So we'll go through that. And if you've never done that, I encourage you to do so. And um, let's get right into it. And so I wanted to also um, share with you 1 Corinthians 5. Paul says, Jesus is the Passover lamb. So let us celebrate the feast. And I think after we go through this teaching, you're going to want to celebrate it. I just know you are. So, okay, the first item here is called the carpus, okay? And that's right here. And this is parsley, okay? And it represents spring and life, fertility. And it's a picture of how the Israelites flourished. They um, multiplied even in the midst of their bondage in Egypt. So what you do during a Passover Seder is you take these carpas and you dip it here in this this is water with salt in it so it's salt water so you would dip the carpas or the parsley into the salt water and the salt water represents the sweat and the tears that they suffered under while they were slaves in Egypt but now Jesus and the Lord has redeemed everything on this plate you'll see redemption and so here he even redeems tears as it reads in Psalm 126, it says, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. And so when you receive Jesus in your heart, he truly does turn our tears into joys. Okay, next I wanna show you this part here. This is called the Haraset. And um, this is basically apples and nuts and honey and cinnamon. And it is the only sweet thing on the plate, as we'll discover. And this is supposed to be a picture of like the bricks and mortar. It even looks like red bricks here. Um, that the Israelites, when they were slaves, they were making bricks and mortar. And um, so even that word haraset comes from that, that Hebrew word meaning clay. And so this is to be um, eaten of and and to taste the sweetness of the Lord's redemption, right? Remember that verse that says, taste and see that the Lord is good. So we do that when we partake of the haraset here, the apples and the nuts. Okay, we go around the plate and this here is called marar. Can you see it right here? And this is horseradish. And that word marar means bitter in Hebrew, and it's to symbolize the bitterness of slavery, okay? And so I was thinking about bitterness in the Bible and that word marar, and I thought, that's, I've read that before, that's in Exodus 15. Do you remember when, when they passed through the Red Sea, they're coming through the desert now, and they were so thirsty, they found water, but it was bitter, okay? And then Moses, uh, God said to Moses, look at that tree, take that tree and throw it into the water, and when you do, it will be sweet. And guys, that is a picture of the cross. That is a picture of how um, Jesus' death on the cross makes the bitter things in our lives sweet. So there is redemption, redemption in the cross of Jesus Christ. Okay, moving on. We have right here, which is romaine lettuce. It is called the Hazaret. Okay, and this hazaret here um, is to be the bitter root. Now we're looking at it and it's really the leaves here, but it's a picture how, um, how sin is. And the leaves of romaine lettuce, when you eat the leaves, they're pretty sweet, but the actual root is very bitter. It's practically inedible. And so it's a picture of how sin cannot be swallowed, okay? It's sweet at first, but then it's like gravel in your mouth. You know, Proverbs 20, 17 says, at first sin is sweet, but afterwards your mouth is full of gravel. So the Lord is saying, even give me those things. I have paid for your sin, past, present, and future. Let me take away that bitter root. Okay, going around the plate, we come to the biggest item here. And this actually right here is the shank bone of a lamb. 
It is called the Zeroah, and it is to symbolize the arm of the Lord. In fact, um, I'll hold it up here. Um, the word Zeroah in Hebrew means arm. And Isaiah 53 is a key um, passage that you really want to read through as, as we're entering into Passover here. It talks about the suffering servant of Jesus. It's the prophetic uh, passage of scripture. And it opens up by saying, to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? To whom has he been revealed to? And when the Lord reveals himself to you, you see that it truly is Jesus. Because in Deuteronomy 26, 8, you, this, familiar, this is probably a familiar passage. It says, the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. It's the outstretched arm of the lamb, the Passover lamb, right? Isn't that awesome? So, um, um, and I, I can't help but think about the outstretched arms of the Lord on the cross where he truly redeemed us sins past present and future so his arms are open wide and he's saying today is the day of salvation receive me i have open arms for you i have died for you i am the great arm of the lord who has rescued you so it's so awesome read through isaiah 53 okay in the last part see if you can see this it's right in the middle it is called the beatza it is a roasted egg it is not an easter egg guys right um so um, this symbolizes new birth. It is, has been roasted like the lamb during the Passover meal was roasted. And anything that's uh, been roasted, it basically has been purified with fire. And so basically that's what the Lord is giving us, a new um, purification, a new birth, a new life in Messiah. So um, isn't that awesome, guys? These are the elements that are on the Passover plate. So actually, Jesus went through this plate, you know, there at the Last Supper. People do have been doing this for thousands of years, and you can do it as well. It's so awesome because it all points to Jesus. Okay, so there's more at the Passover Seder. It's involving the bread and the wine. So I have here a cup of wine, and I'm just going to move this over here, and I have bread. Okay, so um, it's here... Uh, during this part of the Seder, okay, um, where there are four cups of wine. And the four cups of wine are related to the four promises that were given in Exodus um, chapter 6, okay? And just a little uh, backdrop before I said, before I start, the, the wine during the Seder has to be red wine, okay? Symbolizes joy. And of course, later we'll see that, of course, it symbolizes Jesus' blood. And then the bread here, we'll get into, this is matzah bread. So this is, this is where communion was instituted, right here at the Passover Seder. So cool. Okay, so the first cup, it's telling you, relates to Exodus chapter 6, verse 5. And the first cup goes on to say this, Furthermore, I have heard the groanings of the sons of Israel, because the Egyptians holding them in bondage, I have remembered my covenant. And so say, therefore, to the sons of Israel, say these four things. And this is where the four cups come from. Say to the sons of Israel, the first one, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. So this cup is the cup of sanctification. It is the first cup. It's, it's relating to how the Lord was bringing them out, sanctifying them, setting them apart, not just in the Exodus, but even now, here and now, the Lord wants to set you apart. So at this Passover Seder, they would take this cup of sanctification, the first cup, and they would partake of it. Okay, then there would be the second cup, which goes on as the verse goes on, because the second promise is, and I will deliver you from their bondage. So this second cup is the cup of deliverance, and then they would partake of the second cup of deliverance. At that time, the wine would be kind of put aside, the, the cups, I should say, and a meal would be served, which would be a roasted lamb. I think even today, sometimes um, they have uh, roasted chicken or other things, um, but a meal was, was served, okay? And then three matzahs, three matzah bread uh, would be presented, and it would be here wrapped up, right? And so the bread 
was this matzah bread. It is unleavened bread. It is the bread that's talked about in Exodus chapter 12, where the Lord said, you know, you're not going to have time for the yeast to rise in this bread. It'll be unleavened bread. So it'll be a flat bread. Okay, this is called the bread of affliction. It's also because it doesn't have leaven in it. Leaven is a lot, usually associated with sin because leaven puffs up like pride. So this is like pure bread, right? Um, and so... During the Passover, during this part, there would be three pieces of matzah. And so the three pieces the Jewish people believe are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But as Christians, we can look at this, and I challenge you to look at it as the Father, sorry about that here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Because here's what they do, and here's what Jesus did during the Passover dinner. What they do is they take that second, that middle piece of matzah, right, they take these other two and they set them aside. But this middle one, which if we believe is the sun, the picture of the sun, right? They do, they, they break it. And this is what Jesus said. He said, this is my body broken for you. And during this part of the Seder, they take it, they wrap it up in a white cloth. And then it is hidden in another part of the house. And then later, a ch the child is sent forth to bring, to find this piece of matzah and bring it forth and bring it back. And so then they open it up and they take this hidden piece and they partake. And this is when Jesus said, this is my body broken for you, partake of it, right? And so this Second piece of the three matzahs is called the afikomen, and it's Greek of all things, and it means, guys, he will come again. That's what it means in Greek, right? So, I mean, it's totally a picture of Jesus here. His body broken for you, wrapped up in a tomb, wrapped up in cloth, right? Hidden away, only to be found, right? Three days later. And then we partake of him. And if you look at this matzah, look at it. It is striped and pierced. It is burnt, right? And is this not a picture of Jesus? Again, it goes back to Isaiah 53. It says he is wounded and pierced for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Our iniquities. The chast chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. So this is so awesome. This is where the bread for communion comes from, guys. The afikomen, he will come again. Okay, so now it goes back to the wine. We are on the third cup, and it's still talking about that these promises in Exodus uh, chapter 6, verse 6 continues, and the, and the verse is read, I will also redeem you with an outstretched arm, We've heard that before, right? And with great judgments. This, at this cup, this third cup, this is the cup of redemption. And at this point, this is when Jesus said, this is the blood of the new covenant. And so he raised this cup and they partook of it. They all partook of this cup. This is the cup of redemption. So again, guys, this is where communion comes from. That, that second piece, that afikomen of the body of Christ, and then this third cup of redemption. And what is so cool is that also this third cup is also seen in other parts of, of um, Hebraic life and scripture. This third cup, this cup of redemption would be raised during an engagement. Okay, so even Jesus at the Seder, it was like he was raising a cup of engagement, a cup of betrothal, saying, I have betrothed you to myself. Isn't that awesome, guys? So um, I have to say, though, when, when Jesus was saying these things, I think we read them in Scripture, and we're so used to hearing them that they, we just read them, and, and it's just pretty uh, well-known. It's, it's knowledge. Of course, he th said those things. But here, during a Passover Seder, Jesus was truly disrupting things. I mean, who would say that during breaking this afikomen? And who would say that, that this is their blood? Um, so this was totally radical. And Jesus was bringing in, he was revealing himself of the new covenant, redemption, 
for us. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. So even now, as we look at this Passover and we can remember him and receive him. Okay, so now there's a fourth cup, guys. This is the last of it. The fourth cup is referred to in, in the seventh verse of Exodus 6, and it says, Then I will take you for my people, and I will be your God. This is the cup of restoration. And it's of this fourth cup that Jesus said, Of this cup I will not drink of until that day. I will drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. That's Matthew 26, 19. So Jesus said, Of this fourth cup, I'm not going to drink of it with you until... The marriage supper of the lamb happens because I want to drink that cup of full restoration with you. So that's that's that picture of how Jesus is going to come back for us. And it's just that picture of the bridegroom coming back for the bride and to celebrate and fully restore her truly. So what revelation we have found here, right? And um, just as we see that revelation of the marriage supper and the lamb found in the book of Revelation, but there is so much revelation here of Jesus, right? In the Passover plate, in, in the bread of life here, this um, Afi Komen, we see by our stripes, we, uh, by his stripes, we are healed, drinking the blood. So guys, if you haven't seen Jesus in the Passover plate, I, I suggest you rewatch this a couple times, but um, I think it's pretty plain to see. And so my prayer is that your eyes will be open, the eyes of your heart will be open to Jesus, your Messiah, that you would receive him. Whether you're a Christian, just seeing the, the um, Jewishness of the gospel, or if you are a Jewish person trying to figure out how Jesus can be Jewish, well, it all comes together. He has redeemed us to become one new man in him. And so, you know, in the book of um, John, it says, um, it says, uh, John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So guys, I encourage you to not pass over, pass over, to enter in, to receive, to remember him, even celebrate with a Passover plate like this guys, and get ready for the feast of first fruits because Jesus rises again. Thanks for listening guys. Blessings.